Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Dennis Berkey, and I have the high honor and great privilege of serving as president and CEO of Worcester Polytechnic Institute. I want to start this morning by saying personally how pleased I am that we can have so many of you here to celebrate not only the very important work that NASA continues to do for us in this nation, but the celebration of science and technology and especially education. It is a wonderful partnership that we enjoy with NASA in committing to help future generations of scientists and engineers and astronauts and leaders of industry understand just how important science and mathematics and technological education is to their intellectual platform that they will use to proceed to be highly productive and very strong in leadership for the nation. So it's a great pleasure to welcome all of you. We certainly want to welcome our distinguished guests from NASA, including many NASA educators participating in this festival and others on the podium who will be more formally introduced in just a few minutes. I want to welcome our political delegation, including guests on the platform, and our state senators, Harriet Chandler and Karen Spilka and Representative Harold Naughton. I want to welcome the many Worcester area business leaders and presidents and staffs from the other colleges and universities of our city. A special welcome to Melinda Boone, the superintendent of the Worcester Public Schools, and to many other educators, committed parents, and students for making time in your schedule today. We are honored at WPI to be the first university to host a Centennial Challenge, demonstrating important partnerships of universities and federal agencies to work together to solve important problems. I want to say especially about NASA how much we at WPI appreciate not only their leadership in space exploration and the ways they have been so encouraging and so inspiring to generations now of young people in this country, but for the enormous technological contributions that the agency has made to our daily lives, the technological advances that many of us just don't realize come out of the high intensity work that is done by this agency. It is a vitally important arm of the nation's advance and we're so proud to have our NASA colleagues with us today. NASA has asked WPI not only to host this competition, but to create a destination for younger populations to engage with the possibilities of science and engineering. And we feel uniquely positioned to bring the robotics expertise and STEM education component uh, very prominently into the center stage for today's activities. I want to begin by introducing and inviting to the podium our Congressman James McGovern. Uh, Jim has represented our third congressional district in Massachusetts since 1996. He is a tireless advocate for his district and for the nation and certainly is a great friend of WPI. He's passionate about this economic recovery and job development in central Massachusetts. He's authored legislation in support of Pell Grants to provide crucial financial resources to allow young people to pursue higher education. Two of his sisters are school teachers in the Worcester Public School System. Today's activities resonate very strongly with Jim's hope for a better future for the children and for his constituencies. It's a great pleasure to introduce Jim McGovern. Thank you. Well, let me uh, thank my friend Dennis Berkey uh, for the great introduction, and uh, I want to thank him and all my friends at WPI for inviting me to participate in today's uh, events. I'm pleased to see so many innovators gathered here to showcase their robotic creations and compete for prizes. I welcome you, and I hope that you all enjoy our city, if you're not from here, and uh, I hope that you enjoy all that this great city has to offer. Uh, I want to thank WPI uh, again for hosting uh, the NASA Centennial Challenge this weekend. WPI is a world-class research institution located in my hometown, so I, I take credit for it everywhere I go. Um, through its cutting-edge programs, WPI helps to attract some of the brightest students in the country uh, to right here in central Massachusetts, and it's working. This area is quickly becoming a hub for some of the uh, for some of the robotics uh, industry featured here today, video game design, biotechnology, 
and many more technologically innovative startups. Uh, as the first university in the country to offer a, ba a bachelor's degree program in robotics engineering, WPI is a particularly well-suited venue to showcase these uh, inventive creations. I want to thank NASA Deputy Administrator Laurie Garber uh, and other NASA officials for traveling to Worcester today to participate uh, in the competition. I want to thank Mason Peck, the NASA Chief Technologi uh, Technologist who's here, who I was kind enough to come by my office in Washington a couple of days ago to kind of brief me on a lot of the things that NASA uh, is involved with. We are exceptionally lucky to have one of our nation's most treasured organizations supporting strong math and science education and research at every level, from elementary schools to higher ed. Additionally, NASA is doing some truly groundbreaking research that has real world applications and touches all of our lives. I believe that as we work to compete in a more globalized world, investments in aerospace technology are more important than ever. These technological investments have led to efficiency improvements in ground and air transportation, improved biomedical applications, and have even supported the creation of cameras found in our cell phones. Companies throughout Massachusetts have partnered with NASA to develop and improve technologies that assist in surgeries, insulate people and materials against extreme temperatures, and help U.S. troops in Iraq and Afghanistan clear caves and bunkers, search buildings, and deal with the dangers posed by improvised explosive devices. These advancements and the research that you are displaying here today can lead to innovative discoveries and will advance our scientific knowledge in ways that we may not even imagine. As you can imagine, I visit a lot of companies and go to a lot of conferences uh, in Massachusetts and throughout the country. But there is little that I do that is as, as exciting as this event, which gives us a glimpse of the tomorrow that's being built by the trailblazers of today. And let me just say one final thing. I think we all, and I, we all, and I include myself in that we all, uh, need to do a better job about talking about the importance of NASA to uh, constituencies that may not quite understand what NASA, NASA does. Um, it, is, uh, it is more than uh, rockets and Star Trek and Star Wars. Uh, it is, as I mentioned and President Berkey mentioned, a whole bunch of very localized uh, advancements that we all pretty much take for granted. And when we cut back uh, on that investment, um, we cut back not only on the chance that we will develop more uh, advancements, uh, but we also uh, put ourselves at an economic disadvantage. Uh, I'm not an engineer. Um, I've, looked at, I've seen some of the exhibits. I can't begin to understand what these exhibits uh, entail to put together. But I do know this as a member of Congress. I want very much to see our economy grow. I want more people working. I want to see our manufacturing uh, back up and running again. And I know enough uh, of what I've seen uh, here today and what I've seen over the years here at this university uh, that uh, the key to the future of our economy is right here. Uh, and uh, so we need to do those investments. When Mason was by my office, uh, you know, I, I was telling him that sometimes people ask me, why do we spend so much money in outer space? Why don't we spend more money right here on Earth? And he had a great response. He said, we don't spend any money in outer space. We do spend it all here on Earth. And research grants, and, you know, and, and, and developing parts for, you know, whether it's uh, the space shuttle or, or uh, you know, or devices that we're going to use to do space exploration, those things put people to work right here. You know, let's, let's, we, we need to better connect those dots. Uh, and uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm reinvigorated by what I see here so that when I go across my district talking to various business groups, I will incorporate robotics and the importance of NASA uh, in, my, in, my, in my conversation. Uh, so um, I am very grateful uh, that this is happening here today. And um, I, I'm, I'm grateful to all of you for inviting me to participate. Um, I look forward to learning more about your projects uh, and more about ways that we can marry the stuff that we're talking about here today to our public schools and to our colleges as well, uh, because uh, STEM education is vitally important uh, if this economy is going to remain number one. And, um, and we have a lot of work to do, but uh, this is an exciting day, and I am very grateful to all of you who are participating. Thank you.
Thanks, Jim, for your optimism and your passion and your leadership. All very much appreciated. It's now a great pleasure to introduce Ms. Lori Garber, who's the NASA Deputy Administrator. Let me interpret that for you. She's the number two person at NASA. The Chief Executive of NASA is referred to as the Administrator, uh, I guess in an act of humility. Uh, but we are so honored to have her today. It's a great pleasure to bring her forward. She was nominated by President Obama, confirmed by the Senate in 2009. She provides leadership, planning, and policy direction for the agency. She worked for NASA from 1996 to 2001, prior to her current appointment, serving as a special assistant to the NASA Administrator and senior policy analyst for the Office of Policy and Plans. She was then named Associate Administrator for the Office of Policy and Plans. Ms. Garber is a Michigan native. She took her bachelor's degree in political science and economics from Colorado College. She became interested in space when she began working for Senator John Glenn from my home state of Ohio in 1983. Her career has been long and distinguished with her two tours of duty for NASA, as well as time in the private sector between those two stints. It's a great pleasure to have her with us this morning, and I invite her to speak to you now. Thank you very much, President Berkey. It is fabulous to be here uh, with the Polytechnic Institute. It is my first time uh, to this uh, institute, and how wonderful to uh, already uh, by this time of day on a Saturday morning, been able to meet with all of the teams and uh, address all of you. Talking with uh, the congressman, I believe that it is already a very worthwhile morning to be able to see uh, elected members uh, who recognize the value of what it is that NASA does is an incredible thing and allows, I think, all of us and the university uh, to be able to advance to those next great challenges. So NASA is all about uh, addressing challenges, right? We were founded in 1958 to address the challenge after Sputnik, and uh, our challenge by President Kennedy to go to the moon was really to have our nation lead in the technological areas that have made this country, this university, uh, great. And NASA continues with these challenges while they have changed. While we were all about beating the Soviet Union back in the 60s, our challenge today is working internationally in peaceful ways with the Russians on the International Space Station. We have had the International Space Station with astronauts permanently working and living in space for over 11 years now with 15 different nations, including the US and the uh, former Soviet Union, the Russians. Uh, I just want to highlight that we have two such astronauts here today. Lee Morin, who is uh, showing off his astronaut status. I'm sure we made him at NASA headquarters, so thank you for wearing uh, your blue suit. Uh, astronaut and Chris Ferguson, who uh, is now with Boeing, who you'll hear from later, but also an astronaut. So I know lots of you want to grow up to be astronauts, and I'm here to tell you that while my political science and economics degree didn't get me uh, to be an astronaut, I do get to work at NASA, and uh, I say if you uh, want to work in space and in space and those activities that we're doing that are of such great value, go get one of those STEM degrees, uh, or, and I don't normally say this in front of Congress, get a political science degree and you can work with Congress. But it is, uh, <laughs> it is a fabulous thing to do because we are all about providing that value to the public and keeping this nation on the cutting edge and driving innovation and technology to keep us in a leadership position. NASA is doing that today in new ways, in new partnerships. Uh, you have most recently seen the Dragon spacecraft dock to the International Space Station. We have a competition right now for not only providing that cargo to International Space Station, but also our precious astronauts uh, over uh, the next, uh, at least, uh, eight years of the space station. We will have our International Space Station until 2020, and as we are spending less on those transportation needs to low Earth orbit for NASA, we are investing in rockets and spacecraft that are going to go beyond again. Uh, back around the moon initially for test flights, and the President has set a goal of going to an asteroid by 2025 and on to Mars in the mid-2030. So the challenge we have 
today, literally, with those of you who are developing uh, these robots, is to, in preparation for humans going to Mars, to go to Mars and pick up a sample return uh, and return it to uh, the Earth. So I saw and met a bunch of the students who are doing that today, and I'm very excited to uh, see the competition. But why do we do prizes at NASA? If we are about technology and innovation, this is a way to advance technology and innovation. It is a great way to solve some of these great challenges that NASA is all about solving and to help us continue to inspire future generations to go into these fields, which again, will help fuel our economy and give us all a better future. So NASA's vision is to reach for new heights and reveal the unknown so that what we do and learn will benefit all humankind. So what a great place to work, right? Uh, we do the hardest things that have never been done. And do we do it just to do it? No, we do it to benefit all humankind. Lots of ways to benefit humankind. Human health, our, our environment, pushing the technology and help our economic and national security base. So it is great to see so many people continue to be excited about NASA. We have a very vibrant future. So as we explore the universe, we continue to need autonomous robots. Folks here, uh, much smarter than me, are showing us how we can do that in very creative ways. We have teams from uh, two members to 60 members, from students to adults, and it's great to see them being inspired by prizes. So in prizes, NASA doesn't have to spend the money until we solve the challenge, right? Prizes have been there as a tool for uh, innovation for centuries, and uh, the most famous one, perhaps the Ortiz Prize, where Charles Limber won it by going across the uh, Atlantic Ocean. And in that prize alone, his team raised over twice the $25,000 prize money, and, that, and they were not the only team. So it is a way to leverage, in our NASA view, since we are funded by the taxpayer, a better value for your taxpayer investment to get you a lot more innovation. And a lot of people have different ideas about how to solve these challenges. So we pay only for success and establish a goal that is meaningful, that is something we need to do, and then a lot more people get to help reach that goal. They inspire risk taking. I saw a lot of people today letting us know that they're not gonna make it today, but they will be back next year. One uh, gentleman is wearing a yes, failure is an option t-shirt. And I commented right away when I saw it, and he lit up, he said, I work for you. I saw NASA was coming. Uh, and you know, that's great, because my boss, Charlie Bolton, the head of NASA, four-time astronaut, two-star Marine general, uh, has told our leadership team often, he has never learned from a success. You learn from failures. And so uh, while we hope to give away some money today, we would love, absolutely, to uh, have winners. For those who are not able to make the challenge today, uh, you're learning from it. And I even have learned from you. So I so appreciate that. Uh, the benefits, of course, are crucial to NASA as we open this next chapter. Uh, of space. We talk about human spaceflight and robotic spaceflight like they're two different things, but they're not. Not only do we not spend any money in space, my, my favorite line from an astronaut was, yeah, took my wallet, but there was nothing to buy. Yes. Uh, <laughs> nothing, no stores in space. It's all spent right here on Earth. But also, these technologies don't build themselves. These rockets don't build themselves. It's all about people. It is the people throughout the agency and our contractor community and our academic partners who help us create the future. So thank you for being here uh, today and giving up your Saturday. I could not be more excited. Uh, this is one of the greatest things I get to do as well. Uh, while it is fabulous to be the deputy of NASA, it truly is about uh, all the things that you were doing here today and representing with the Centennial Challenges. So thank you for having me. I look forward to the day. Thank you, Lori. Very nicely done. I'd now like